$1,000, you will not get a tuition bill from a public college or university if the plan that I worked on with Bernie Sanders uh, is enacted. And we're going to work hard to make sure that it is because we are going to go where the money is. Most of the gains in the last years since the Great Recession have gone to the very top. So we are going to have the wealthy pay their fair share. We're going to have corporations uh, make a contribution greater than they are now to our country. That is a plan that has been analyzed by independent experts, which said that it could produce 10 million new jobs. By contrast, Donald's plan has been uh, analyzed to uh, conclude it might lose uh, three and a half million jobs. Why? Because his whole plan is to cut taxes, to give the biggest tax breaks ever to the wealthy and to corporations, adding $20 trillion to our debt and causing the kind of dislocation that we have seen before, because it truly will be trickle-down economics on steroids. So the plan I have, I think, will actually produce greater opportunities. The plan he has will cost us jobs and possibly lead to another great recession. Secretary, thank you. Mr. Trump, why will your plan create more jobs and growth than Secretary Clinton? Well, first of all, before I start on my plan, her plan is going to raise taxes and even double your taxes. Her tax plan is a disaster. And she can say all she wants about college tuition. And I'm a big proponent. We're going to do a lot of things for college tuition, but the rest of the public's going to be paying for it. We will have a massive, massive tax increase under Hillary Clinton's plan. But I'd like to start off where we left, because when I said Japan and Germany, and I'm not to single them out, but South Korea, these are very rich, powerful countries, uh, Saudi Arabia, nothing but money. We protect Saudi Arabia. Why aren't they paying? She immediately, when she heard this, I questioned it. And I questioned NATO. Why aren't the NATO questioned? Why aren't they paying? Because they weren't paying. Since I did this, this was a year ago, all of a sudden they're paying. And I've been given a lot of, a lot of credit for it. All of a sudden they're starting to pay up. They have to pay up. We're protecting people. They have to pay up. And I'm a big fan of NATO, but they have to pay up. She comes out and said, we love our allies. We think our allies are great. Well, it's awfully hard to get them to pay up when you have somebody saying, we think how great they are. We have to tell Japan in a very nice way. We have to tell Germany, all of these countries, South Korea, we have to say, you have to help us out. We have, during his regime, during President Obama's regime, we've doubled our national debt. We're up to $20 trillion. So my plan, we're going to renegotiate trade deals. We're going to have a lot of free trade. We're going to have free trade, more free trade than we have right now. But we have horrible deals. Our jobs are being taken out by the deal that her husband signed, NAFTA, one of the worst deals ever. Her, our jobs are being sucked out of our economy. You look at all of the places that I just left. You go to Pennsylvania, you go to Ohio, you go to Florida, you go to any of them. You go upstate New York. Our jobs have fled to Mexico and other places. We're bringing our jobs back. I am going to renegotiate NAFTA. And if I can't make a great deal, then we're going to terminate NAFTA and we're going to create new deals. We're going to have trade. But we're going, to term, we're going to terminate it. We're going to make a great trade deal. And if we can't, we're going to do it. We're going to go a separate way because it has been a disaster. We are going to cut taxes massively. We're going to cut business taxes massively. They're going to start hiring people. We're going to bring the two and a half trillion dollars that's offshore back into the country. We are going to start the engine rolling again because right now our country is dying at 1% GDP. Well, let me translate that if I can, Chris, because. Um, you can't. The fact is, he's going to uh, advocate for the largest tax cuts we've ever seen, three times more than uh, the tax cuts under the Bush administration. I have said repeatedly throughout this campaign, I will not raise taxes on anyone making $250,000 or less. I also will not add a penny to the debt. I have costed out what I'm going to do. He will through his massive tax cuts, add $20 trillion to the debt. Well, he mentioned the debt. We know how to get control of the debt. When my husband was president, we went from a $300 billion deficit to a $200 billion surplus, and we were actually on the path to eliminating the national debt. When President Obama came into office, he inherited the worst economic disaster since the Great Depression. He has cut the deficit by two-thirds. So, yes, one of the ways you go after the debt, one of the ways you create jobs is by investing in people. So I do have investments, investments in new jobs, investments in education, skill training, and the opportunities for people to get ahead and stay ahead. That's the kind of approach that will work. 
cutting taxes on the wealthy, we've tried that. Secretary, it has not worked the way that uh, it has been. Secretary promised. Clinton, I want, I want to pursue your plan uh, because in many ways it is similar to the Obama stimulus plan in 2009, uh, which has led to the slowest GDP growth since 1949. Correct. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, you told me in July when we spoke that the problem is that President Obama didn't get to do enough in what he was trying to do with his stimulus. So is your plan basically more, even more of the Obama stimulus? Well, it's a combination, Chris. And let, let me say that when you inherit the level of economic catastrophe that President Obama inherited, uh, it was a real touch-and-go situation. I was in the Senate before I became Secretary of State. I've never seen uh, people as physically distraught as the Bush administration uh, team was because of what was happening to the economy. I personally believe that the steps that President Obama took saved the economy. He doesn't get the credit he deserves for taking some very hard positions. But it was a terrible recession. So now we've dug ourselves out of it. We're standing, but we're not yet running. So what I am proposing is that we invest from the middle out and the ground up, not the top down. That is not going to work. That's why what I have put forward doesn't add a penny to the debt, but it is the kind of approach that will enable more people to take those new jobs, higher paying jobs. We're beginning to see some increase in incomes, and we certainly have had a long string me, of increasing jobs. We've got to do more to get the whole economy moving, and that's what I believe I will be able to do. Mr. Trump, even conservative economists who have looked at your plan say that the numbers don't add up, that your idea, and you've talked about 25 million jobs created, 4% over a 10-year period growth, is unrealistic. Uh, and they say, you talk a lot about growing the energy industry, they say with oil prices as low as they are right now, that's unrealistic as well. Your response? So I just left some high representatives of India. They're growing at 8%. Uh, China is growing at 7%, and that for them is a catastrophically no low number. We are growing, our last report came out, and it's right around the 1% level, and I think it's going down. Last week, as you know, la the end of last week, they came out with an anemic jobs report, a terrible jobs report. In fact, I said, is that the last jobs report before the election? Because if it is, I should win easily. It was so bad. The report was so bad. Look, our country is stagnant. We've lost our jobs. We've lost our businesses. We're not making things anymore, relatively speaking. Our product is pouring in from China, pouring in from Vietnam, pouring in from all over the world. I've visited so many communities. This has been such an incredible education for me, Chris. I've gotten to know so many. I've developed so many friends over the last year. And they cry when they see what's happened. I passed factories that were thriving 20, 25 years ago. And because of the bill that her husband signed and she blessed 100%, it is just horrible what's happened to these people in these communities. Now, she can say that her husband did well, but boy, did they suffer as... NAFTA kicked in because it didn't really kick in very much, but it kicked in after they left. Boy, did they suffer. That was one of the worst things that's ever been signed by our country. Now she wants to sign Trans-Pacific Partnership, and she wants it. She lied when she said she didn't call it the gold standard in one of the debates. She totally lied. She did call it the gold standard, and they actually fact-checked, and they said I was right. I, was I, I, I want to give you a chance to, to briefly speak to that, and then I want to pivot to one sixth of the will be economy, as bad as now. which is Obamacare, but go ahead. Well, Briefly. first, let me let me say, number one, uh, when I saw the uh, final agreement for TPP, I said I was against it. It didn't meet my tests. I've had the same tests. Does it create jobs, raise incomes, and further our national security? I'm against it now. I'll be against it after the election. I'll be against it when I'm president. There's only one of us on this stage who's actually shipped jobs to Mexico, because that's Donald. He's shipped jobs to 12 countries, including Mexico. But he mentioned China. And, you know, one of the biggest problems we have with China is the illegal dumping of steel and aluminum into our markets. I have fought against that as a senator. I've stood up against it as Secretary of State. Donald has bought Chinese steel and aluminum. In fact, the Trump 
hotel right here in Las Vegas was made with Chinese steel. So he goes around with crocodile tears about how terrible it is. But he has given That's jobs to Chinese steel workers, not American steel workers. Mr. Trump? That's the kind well, of approach well, just say, that is just, just not going to work. It We're just, going to pull the country together. We're going to have trade agreements that we enforce. That's why I'm going to have a trade prosecutor for the first time in history, and we're going to enforce those agreements, and we're going to look for businesses uh, to help us by buying American products. Ahead, I Mr. ask Trump. a simple question. She's been doing this for 30 years. Why the hell didn't you do it over the last 15, 20 years? You, you were know, very much involved, excuse me, my turn. You were very much involved in every aspect of this country, very much. And you do have experience. I say the one thing you have over me is experience, but it's bad experience because what you've done has turned out badly. For 30 years, you've been in a position to help. And if you say that I use steel or I use something else, I make it impossible for me to do that. I wouldn't mind. The problem is you talk, but you don't get anything done, Hillary. You don't. Just like when you ran the State Department, six billion dollars was missing how do you miss six billion dollars you ran the state department six billion dollars was either stolen they don't know it's gone six billion dollars if you become president this country is going to be in some mess believe me well first of all what he just said about the state department is not only untrue it's been debunked numerous times uh but I think it's really an important issue. He raised the 30 years of experience. So let me just talk briefly about that. You know, back in the 1970s, I worked for the Children's Defense Fund, and I was taking on uh, discrimination against African-American kids in schools. He was getting sued by the Justice Department for racial discrimination in his apartment buildings. In the 1980s, I was working to reform the schools in Arkansas. He was borrowing $14 million from his father to start his businesses. In the 1990s, I went to Beijing, and I said, women's rights are human rights. He insulted a former Miss Universe, Alicia Machado, called her a, an eating machine. And on the day when I was in the Situation Room monitoring the raid that brought Osama bin Laden to justice, he was hosting The Celebrity Apprentice. So I'm happy to compare my 30 years of experience, what I've done for this country, trying to help in every way I could, especially kids and families, get ahead and stay ahead with your 30 years, and I'll let the American people make that decision. Well, I think I did a much better job. I built a massive company, a great company, some of the greatest assets in the, anywhere in the world, uh, worth many, many billions of dollars. Uh, I started with a $1 million loan. I agree with that. It's a $1 million loan, but I built a phenomenal company, and if we could run our country the way I've run my company, we would have a country that you would be so proud of. You would even be proud of it. And frankly, uh, when you look at her real record, take a look at Syria, take a look at the migration, take a look at Libya, take a look at Iraq. She gave us ISIS because her and Obama created this huge vacuum. And a small group came out of that huge vacuum because when they we should have never been in Iraq, but once we were there, we should have never got out the way they wanted to get out. She gave us ISIS, as sure as you are sitting there, and what happened is now ISIS is in 32 countries, and now I listen how she's going to get rid of ISIS. She's going to get rid of nobody. All right, we're, we are going to get to foreign hotspots in a few moments, but the next segment is fitness to be president of the United States. Mr. Trump, at the last debate, you said your talk about grabbing women was just that, talk and that you've never actually done it. And since then, as we all know, nine women have come forward and said that you either groped them or kissed them without their consent. Why would so many different women from so many different circumstances over so many different years, why would they all in this last couple of weeks make up, you deny this, why would they all make up these stories? And since this is a question for both of you, Secretary Clinton, Mr. Trump says what your husband did and that you defended was even worse. Mr. Trump, you go first. Well, first of all, those stories have been largely debunked. Uh, those people, I don't know those people. I have a feeling how they came. I believe it was her campaign that did it. Just like if you look at what came out today on the clips where I was wondering what happened with my rally in Chicago and other rallies where we had such violence. She's the one in Obama that caused the violence. They hired people 
They paid them $1,500, and they're on tape saying, be violent, cause fights, do bad things. I would say the only way, because those stories are all totally false, I have to say that. And I didn't even apologize to my wife, who's sitting right here, because I didn't do anything. I didn't know any of these women. I didn't see these women. These women, the woman on the plane, the woman, I think they want either fame or her campaign did it. And I think it's her campaign. Because what I saw, what they did, which is a criminal act, by the way, where they're telling people to go out and start fist fights and start violence. And I'll tell you what, in particular in Chicago, people were hurt and people could have been killed in that riot. And that was now all on tape, started by her. I believe, Chris, that she got these people to step forward. If it wasn't, they get their 10 minutes of fame. But they were all totally, it was all fiction. It was lies and it was fiction. Well, Secretary Clinton. At, at the last debate, we heard Donald talking about what he uh, did to women. And after that, a number of women have come forward uh, saying that's exactly what he did to them. Now, what was his response? Well, he held a number of big rallies where he said that he could not possibly have done uh, those things to those women because they were not attractive enough for I, I did uh, not them say to be that. assaulted. I did not say that. In fact, he went on but, to say... Her two, her two minutes, sir, her two minutes. But did he, not it, say that. It's her two minutes. He went on to say, uh, look at her. I don't think so. About another woman, he said, that wouldn't be my first choice. He attacked the woman reporter writing the story, called her disgusting, as he has called a number of women uh, during this campaign. You know, Donald thinks belittling women makes him bigger. He goes after their dignity, their self-worth, and I don't think there is a woman anywhere who doesn't know what that feels like. So we now know what Donald thinks and what he says and how he acts toward women. That's who Donald is. I think it's really up to all of us to demonstrate who we are and who our country is and to stand up and be very clear about what we expect from our next president, how we want to bring our country together, where we don't want to have the kind of pitting of people one against the other, where instead we celebrate our diversity, we lift people up, and we make our country even greater. America is great because America is good. And it really is up to all of us to make that true now and in the future, and particularly for our children and our grandchildren. Mr. Trump, nobody has more respect for women than I do. Nobody. Nobody has more respect. Please, everybody. And frankly, uh, those stories have been largely debunked. And I really want to just talk about something slightly different. She mentions this, which is all fiction, all fictionalized, probably or possibly started by her and her very sleazy campaign. But I will tell you, what isn't fictionalized are her emails where she destroyed 33,000 emails criminally, criminally, after getting a subpoena from the United States con Congress. What happened to the FBI? I don't know. We have a great general, four-star general, today, you read it in all the papers, going to potentially serve five years in jail for lying to the FBI. One lie. She's lied hundreds of times to the people, to Congress, and to the, to the FBI. He's going to probably go to jail. This is a four-star general. And she gets away with it, and she can run for the presidency of the United States? That's really what you should be talking about, not fiction, where somebody wants fame or where they come out of her crooked campaign. Secretary Clinton. Well, every time uh, Donald is pushed on something, which is obviously uncomfortable, like what these women are saying, um, he immediately goes to... Uh, denying responsibility, uh, and it's not just about women. He never apologizes or says he's sorry for anything. So we know what he has said and what he's done to women, but he also went after a disabled reporter, mocked and mimicked him on Wrong. national television. 
he went after Mr. and Mrs. Khan, the parents of a young man who died serving our country, a gold star family because of their religion. He went after John McCain, a prisoner of war, said he prefers people who aren't captured. He went after a federal judge born in Indiana, but who Donald said couldn't be trusted to try the fraud and racketeering case against Trump University because his parents were Mexican. So it's not one thing. This is a pattern, a pattern of divisiveness, of a very dark and in many ways dangerous vision of our country where he incites violence, where he applauds people who are pushing and pulling and punching at his rallies. That is not who America is. And I hope that as we move in the last weeks of this campaign, more and more people will understand what's at stake in this election. It really does come down to what kind of country we are going to have. Folks. So sad when she talks about violence at my rallies and she caused the violence. It's on tape. The, during now, the, last the other things are false, but honestly, I'd love to talk about getting rid of ISIS and I'd love to talk about other things. Okay. But those other charges, as she knows, there are false. In this, in this bucket about fitness to be president, there's been a lot of developments over the last 10 days since the last debate. I'd like to ask you about, about them. These are questions that the American people have. Secretary Clinton, during your 2009 Senate confirmation hearing, you promised to avoid even the appearance of a conflict of interest with your dealing with the Clinton Foundation while you were Secretary of State. But emails show that donors got special access to you. Those seeking grants for Haiti relief were considered separately from non-donors, and some of those donors got contract, government contracts, taxpayer money. Can you really say that you kept your pledge to that Senate committee, and why isn't what happened and what went on between you and the Clinton Foundation, why isn't it what Mr. Trump calls pay to play? Well, everything I did as Secretary of State was in furtherance of uh, uh, our country's interests and our values. The State Department has said that. I think that's been proven. But I am happy. In fact, I am thrilled to talk about the Clinton Foundation because it is a world-renowned charity. And I am so proud of the work that it does. You know, I could talk for the rest of the debate. I know I don't have the time to do that. But just briefly, uh, the Clinton Foundation made it possible for 11 million people around the world with HIV AIDS to afford treatment. And that's about half of all the people in the world who are getting treatment. In partnership with the American uh, Health Association, we have made environments and schools healthier Secretary, for kids, Secretary including Clinton, healthier respect, respectfully, lunches. Respectfully, this, this is an open discussion. Well, it is an open I, discussion. I understand. And, and a specific you, question went to pay if you reply. Do you want to well, talk about that? Well, no, but there is no but there is no evidence, but there is a problem. lot of evidence very about well the very good work and, it's and a criminal the high enterprise that and the so many people like know It's a criminal enterprise. Uh, Saudi Arabia giving $25 billion, Qatar, all of these countries. You talk about women and women's rights. So these are people that push gays off business, off buildings. These are people that kill women and treat women horribly, and yet you take their money. So I'd like to ask you right now, why don't you give back the money that you've taken from certain countries that treat certain groups of people so horribly. Why don't you give back the money? I think it would be a great gesture. Well, because she takes a tremendous amount of money, and you take a look at the people of Haiti. I was at a little Haiti the other day in Florida, and I want to tell you, they hate the Clintons, because what's happened in Haiti with the Clinton Foundation is a disgrace. And you know it, and they know it, and everybody knows Secretary it. Secretary Clinton. Well, very quickly, we um, at the Clinton Foundation spend 90%, 90% of all the money that uh, is donated on behalf of programs of people around the world and in our own country. I'm very proud of that. We have the highest rating from the watchdogs that uh, follow foundations. And I'd be happy to compare what we do with the Trump Foundation, which took money from other people and bought a six-foot portrait of Donald. I mean, who does that? Uh, it, it just was astonishing. But when it comes to Haiti, Haiti is the poorest country in our hemisphere. The earthquake and the hurricanes, it has devastated Haiti. Uh, Bill and I have been involved in trying to help Haiti for many years. The Clinton Foundation raised $30 million to help Haiti after the catastrophic uh, earthquake and 
all of the terrible problems the people there had. We've done things to help small businesses, agriculture, and so much else. And we're going to keep working to help Haiti because it's an important I, part of the American I, I wanna, uh, They don't experience. want you to help them anymore. I, no, I, 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 I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to mention one thing. Trump Foundation, small foundation, people contribute, I contribute. The money goes 100%, 100% goes to different charities, including a lot of military. I don't get anything. I don't buy boats. I don't buy planes. What happens was, is was the money goes the money, out. Wasn't some of the money used to settle your lawsuit, sir? No, it was. we put up the American flag, and that's it. They put up the American flag. We fought for the right in Palm Beach right, to put up the American there was a, flag. There was a penalty that was imposed by Palm Beach County, there and the was, money came there was, from your foundation. And by the way, the money, the money yourself, went sir. to Fisher House, where they build houses, the money that you're talking about, went to Fisher House, where they build houses for veterans and disabled. I, I want to get into one But of lap. course, there's no way we can know whether any of that is true because he hasn't released his tax returns. He is the first candidate ever to run for president in the last 40 plus years who has not released his tax returns. So everything he says about charity or anything else, uh, we can't uh, prove it. You can look at our tax returns. We've got them all out there. But what is really troubling uh, is that we learned in the last debate he has not paid a penny in federal income tax. And we were talking about immigrants a few minutes ago, Chris. You know, half of all immigrants, undocumented immigrants in our country, actually pay federal income tax. So we have undocumented immigrants in America who are paying more federal income tax than a billionaire. I, want, I find so that let me just, just tell you astonishing. Versus, we're entitled, because of the laws that people like her pass, to take massive amounts of depreciation on other charges, and we do it. And all of her donors, just about all of them, I know Buffett took hundreds of millions of dollars, uh, Soros, George Soros, took hundreds we, of millions we, of dollars. Let me just explain. We, we, all no, of her we, donors, we heard this, most of her donors Mr. Trump, have done the same thing we, as I do. Okay. Well, and well, you know what you should have done? Folks, we heard and this. And you know, Hillary, what you should have done? You should have changed the law when you were a United States senator. Folks, you don't like we heard it. this. Yeah. Because your donors and your special interests are doing the same thing as I do, except even more so. Well, you, you should know, have changed the law, but you won't change I, the law because you take in so much money. I mean, I sat in my apartment today on a very beautiful hotel down the street, known as... Made with Chinese steel. But I will tell you, I sat there, I sat there watching ad after ad after ad, false ad, all paid for by your friends on Wall Street that gave so much money because they know you're going to protect them, and frankly, uh, you should have changed Mr. the laws. Trump, if you don't like what I did, you should have changed Mr. the laws. Mr. Trump, I want to ask you about one last question in, the, in this topic. You have been warning at re rallies recently that this election is rigged and that Hillary Clinton is in the process of trying to steal it from you. Your running mate, Governor Pence, pledged on Sunday that he and you, his words, will absolutely accept the result of this election. Today, your daughter Ivanka said the same thing. I want to ask you here on the stage tonight, do you make the same commitment that you will absolutely, sir, that you will absolutely accept the result of this election. I will look at it at the time. I'm not looking at anything now. I'll look at it at the time. What I've seen, what I've seen is so bad. First of all, the media is so dishonest and so corrupt, and the pylon is so amazing. And the New York Times actually wrote an article about it that they don't even care. It's so dishonest, and they poison the minds of the voters. But unfortunately for them, I think the voters are seeing through it. I think they're going to see through it. We'll find out on November 8th, but I think they're going to but, see but, through it. But, sir, there's if a... If you look, excuse me, Chris, if you look at your voter rolls, you will see millions of people that are registered to vote. Millions. This isn't coming from me. This is coming from Pew Report and other places. Millions of people that are registered to vote.